It's a Farm Friday. Let's talk Boston Red Sox. You are Locked On MLB Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on in to Locked on MLB Prospects, your home for all things minor league baseball. I'm your host, Lindsey Crosby, baseball writer for Sports Illustrated. Thank you for making this your first listen every single day. And on the Farm Friday, as we do, we're talking about the different uh, minor league affiliates of the chosen organization. Today is the Red Sox, which, breaking, quite a few of their affiliates are called the Red Sox. Just want to throw that out there. We're going to start off in low A. Uh, with the Salem Red Sox, Salem, Virginia, not the Salem Witch Trials, Salem, but Salem, Virginia. I don't think the Witch Trials were there. Anyway, 2021, they were 71 and 49, won the division, but there was three divisions, and so only two playoff teams. They missed out on the playoffs by one game. So 71 and 49 don't make the playoffs because of one game. Games played in May. And in August, count the exact same. Like, th- let this be the lesson. This year, uh, going into um, Thursday, they're 34 and 31, so tied to the division lead right now. And the biggest thing here, when you look at the Salem Red Sox, is, is Marcelo May- Meyer is there. Uh, number one pick last year, and just the, the guy for, you know, so. Right now, batting 279, 363, 485, four home runs, eight stolen bases in 33 games. You have to be mindful of when you're in an automated balls and strike league, as well as a league that has rules about pickoffs and things like that. Sometimes the stolen base numbers can get inflated. I do think that's probably legit, though. In rookie ball last year, he was seven of eight on stolen bases. So it's not that he can't do it. It's just, I'm just trying to throw out the caveat there. But very, very advanced hitter, um, all-star potential, and I think like I mean, it's it's legitimate. He has it for a reason. So, again, we don't do a ton of comps on this show, uh, but some of the the way that he plays offensively, the left-handed swing, the size, some of the stuff he does is uh, the comp that I've heard is Corey Seager as far as physically what he looks like in the box and how he plays. So. Uh, Definitely is going to be an offensive first guy. And I don't say that in a bad way. It's not that he's bad at short. There's questions about what is going to happen. So he's 6'3", 188. And he didn't lift weights in high school. So there's the concept of he's going to be in a professional weight, you know, weight training body development program in the bigs. He's going to add some power onto his frame. So the home run should project a little better. But at the same time, if he adds up too much size, he'll have to move off a shortstop. And so then you're like, okay, we're fine with that power at third base. Uh, you know, if you're going to get too big to stay at short, make sure you're big enough to hit home runs, play third base. And he's good defensively despite having below average speed. It's really interesting. So like, very good instincts, very good uh, arm action. His 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 arm strength is plus. And so I think he would be perfectly fine defensively at short. But I think if he moves to third, he would end up being like an elite defender. So we're calling him a shortstop for now, knowing that he may end up possibly, because of physical maturation, moving to third. And if he does, he'll be one of the better defenders at third base in all of baseball. Uh, I I am curious to see if he does move to third again, how that power is going to develop. But uh, a guy that has a little bit of swing and miss in his game, I mean, he's 19 years old, he's going to. But uh, good plate discipline, good decisions about when to swing. Um, he can crush a line drive. He can pull on a pitch. Um you know, hit it for power. So I feel good about Marcelo Meyer. I think he's number one prospect in the system for a reason. Uh, There with him, another guy there in Salem is number eight prospect in the system, Blaze Jordan. 
Um, some places have him listed as a third third baseman. Some places as a first baseman. I think it's something he's going to have to move to first eventually. He's at third right now. But calling card here is the power. Just absolutely absurd power. Now, the problem with this is he doesn't really have an approach at the plate. He just goes up there. He can see the ball pretty well. And so he goes up there, looks for a pitch he can hit, and hits it. And hits it a long way. So, doesn't really have a like a disciplined approach of what he's trying to do other than see ball, hit ball. So, I think like he's gotten this far on his raw power, which is, again, like 70 grade. And his just sheer pitch recognition. So, once you can distill some discipline into him and get him to kind of have a plan at the plate... I think you're going to see him start to rise pretty quickly. He's going to be one of those, you know, batting sixth, seventh, maybe eighth kind of guys. Tons of power. Uh, probably going to have better, like higher than than average strikeout rates. Uh, the guy that I think about just from the profile of big power guy, probably strikes out a little too much, like an Adam Duvall or something. Uh, defensively, Plus arm strength, so he's playing third for right now. He may end up having to move to first. He's already 6'2", 220. I uh, don't quite know exactly how long he'll be able to stay at third, but they're letting him do that for now. Um, and then in Greenville, in the high A affiliate, the Greenville Drive in Greenville, South Carolina, 67-53 and 53 last year, 16 games back. Right now they're 26-39. and 39. So they're already 14 and a half games back. And it's a really interesting kind of grouping of players here. So number three overall prospect in the system, Nick York. Uh, calling him a second baseman. He was considered to be a second or third rounder in 2020. They went out and got him in the first round out of high school. And it's something where one of the better pure hitters in the minors. I mean, just excellent pitch recognition, really quick swing. Barrel like can control the barrel all the way through the zone, can cover everything high, low, inside, outside, all of that. Good plate discipline. Um, he's got decent gap power. I think the uh, the home run power is going to build, going to develop. Um, down the stretch last year, you saw his final 35 games, he hit like 11 home runs. So, absolutely going to be a top of the order offensive guy. The question's going to be defensively, where does he play? Uh, speed is kind of French to average. Um, his his throwing motions very kind of long and convoluted, so it doesn't feel like it's the quick hands you want at or like the quick movement you want at second to turn a double play. Um, arm strength's average. Hands are fine. If he doesn't do second, he's going to end up in left field. But he's definitely he's here for the bat. He's going to be. Top of your order. He's going to be leading off games, getting on, uh, and then taking an extra base where he can, despite the speed not being amazing, uh, simply because he's just offensively very good as far as hitting the ball, getting on base, and knowing what to do. Uh, Going along there, a guy, and there's a theme when we get to double A, but Brian Matta touches on this a bit. Number 11 prospect in the system, right-hand pitcher. Um, had Tommy John in 2021. So, was signed in the 2016 international period. Uh, really kind of exploded after he signed. Got up to 6'3", 225. Looked pretty good in 2019. Alternate site in 2020. And then had Tommy John in 2021, the year they put him on the 40-man. So... Uh, he's just started to come back. I think he's, I, I want to say he's thrown in maybe two games, four games. He's thrown, he's thrown 11 innings on the on the year. And so the question is, can his massive stuff come back? Uh, two seam fastball, upper 90s. Slider looks the exact same out of the hand. Uh, a four seamer, a change up, and then a not great, but a functional curveball. Like, Tons of stuff, great arsenal, and it's like, okay, can he come back this year? You just want to see him pitch. You want to see that stuff start to look the same. If the stuff starts to look the same, the thought process is, okay, in 23, get him back into starting. 
Um, I mean, he's he's got the build to be a back of the rotation guy, 6'3", 225. You know, the, the delivery is compact, repeatable, things like that. Should be able to, to eat innings for you. You just have to see him get back and see the stuff come back. Um, and like I said, Portland, the AA affiliate, has a lot of guys in a similar boat when it comes to Tommy John and waiting, waiting for the, uh, the pitches to come back from the Tommy John. But before we do that, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Blue Nile. Whether you're ready to pop the question or you're celebrating a milestone moment, find jewelry as unique as her with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. So if you want to create the, the engagement ring of her dreams, Blue Nile has simple online tools. They let you choose the diamond shape, the size, the clarity, the setting style, and then the bench jewelers at Blue Nile will handcraft her perfect engagement ring, one of a kind. Or if you want to celebrate a special moment with some sort of fine jewelry, they have it. And if you're having trouble choosing, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand, uh, available via phone, via chat. They will help you find a memorable gift at every single budget. So make your moment sparkle with jewelry from BlueNile.com and Locked On MLB listeners get $50 off purchases of $500 or more. This podcast exclusive includes engagement rings. So use code Locked On. That's code Locked On. Plus, every order is insured. It ships free and arrives in discreet packaging that will not give away what is inside. So shop stress-free and find your forever peace. Go to BlueNile.com today. Today's episode is also brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs and your sports info. You can get the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, uh, hockey playoffs. The NBA draft was last night. Um, so, one, the Locked On Podcast Network did a great job. A lot of the shows went live talking about their draft and what they did. But I guarantee you, at some point in time today, Bet Online is going to come out with the sports wagering information you want about the NBA. Uh, so, playoff odds. Uh, division odds, who's going to, you know, futures for who's going to win the title, things like that. And then they remain the best spot for all your sports scores and news this season. So betonline.net betonline is the fastest and easiest way to check in on MMA, on boxing, on golf. They have two tours now, apparently. So kind of controversial about it. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action because BetOnline is where the game starts. So the Portland Sea Dogs, I've, I've hinted at it now a few times. The theme here is Tommy John. So um, Portland, Maine, first of all, all of these affiliates, I love this, all of these affiliates are in the eastern half of the U.S. You're not putting anybody in Portland, Oregon. You know, they're all, they're all somewhat nearby. Um, only one of them's actually in Massachusetts because, you know, Virginia, South Carolina, Maine, Massachusetts. But anyway, so... 67 47 last year, two and a half games back, 28 and 36 this year. So 13 and a half games back right now. A uh, lot of guys in this system. And uh, Chris Murphy, the lefty, is, is a guy that coming back from Tommy John, trying to figure out what it's going to look like. So 2019 sixth rounder out of San Diego. And Looks like he could be a number four guy, could be a reliever, trying to figure out. It all comes down to what do his strikes look like. He's got a fastball that sits low 90s. He can run it up to 96 or 97, though. He can get it in the top of the zone. We've talked on the show before. The elevated fastball has been a weapon in Major League Baseball. But sometimes it doesn't quite do everything that it was doing. And so it can be... You can give up hard. He can give up hard contact on it. He's given up like 21 home runs in just over 100 innings last year. Um, he's got an above average changeup. It's really good against uh, righties. Gets swings and misses there. He's got a curveball that can be average. Don't quite know if it is average or not yet, but it can get to average. Uh, sliders below average. Probably should scrap it for something like a cutter. But very much has the the work ethic to hey, let's fix this. Let's figure out what's going on. I think it's a decent floor of a solid reliever, but the four pitches, the willingness to work on it to figure out what can change, I think he could be a number four. Uh, and we'll see, I think probably next year is when you'll see him, if he does get a chance to debut, you'll see him next year. Um, after Chris Murphy, now you get into all these these Tommy John guys. And Jay Groom, the lefty, number 10 prospect in the system, he is the, 
I feel like sometimes we're too quick to just assume a guy will come back exactly the same from Tommy John. And Jay Groom's a guy that definitely is is not did not do that. So was considered the top high school pitcher in the country in 2016, first round pick out of New Jersey. Uh, missed all of 2018 and 19 because of Tommy John. Obviously lost 2020. Uh, had a healthy season in 2021. Little inconsistent. And his best stuff never really came back. So his fastball uh, sits 94 or so. He can touch 96 with it. He can throw it to... Um, he can throw it high, low, inside, outside. He can hit all four of the all, all the quadrants. But he doesn't really have that elite spin on it. So it doesn't have the run that it used to have. Um, still a little deceptive with the delivery. Folks still struggle to pick it up. Um, the curveball. The curveball was elite. It hasn't come back to the same. It's, it's probably average right now. Just never really came back to that same kind of bite that it had. Uh, sliders above average. Changeup is, is average. He can use it underneath the zone. But as part like part of the recovery, he went from 6'6", 220 to 6'6", 250. Probably not necessarily always, it wasn't necessarily all good weight. And so conditioning and stamina seems to be issues. It, it feels like later in outings, he struggles a little bit. And then the splits are weird. He's got reverse splits. He he's, dominates righties as a lefty, but struggles against other lefties. I think part of that is probably just not having the curveball there like he did before. But I think, so like so now he's gone from possible top of the rotation guy. You're looking at back of the rotation starter, late inning reliever. You've got um, probably two above average pitches in the fastball and the slider. You've got the average curveball, average changeup. You're looking at a number four, number five. Um, possible late inning reliever with the combo of the two, the fastball slider combo. But just a lesson that like guys don't always come back intact from Tommy John. Things change. Um, another Tommy John guy, Thad Ward, the righty out of Central Florida. He was a fifth round pick in 2018 out of UCF. And he was one of those sinker slider guys in college. Uh, added When he got in the system, added a cutter, worked on a four seamer, worked on the change up. And you're like, okay, yeah, great. This is going to look good. He had a, a 2019, one of the lowest ERAs in the system, like 2.14, one of the highest strikeout rates, just about 30% of any pitcher that threw 100 innings. So looked really good. Lost 2020 through, I want to say like in like two games in AA in 2021, blew out his elbow, had Tommy John in June. And so, I mean, before all of this happened, he had um, a sinker that sat 94-95, he had a slider that was plus, um, a cutter. They all tunneled really well off of it. And so he had those three pitches uh, that were really good. He was working on the changeup in 2020. And so expectations are high. And then obviously, you lost, you know, he lost it. So we, we go from thinking he can be a number three to questioning, is he going to pitch again? He's appeared in. Um, he has not appeared in a game yet this year. Still waiting to see. Like the goal now has gone from number four to number five to can he throw again this year? Like what can we get out of him? So another guy. Just think about Jay Groom. Think about Matthew Lugo. Like I'm uh, sorry, uh, Brian Mata. Um, guys that have not necessarily gotten their stuff back from Tommy John. So Tommy John is not a be all end all. It's not a guaranteed thing. And let some of these these guys be evidence. I want them to work out. I'm hoping they do. But we just have to be mindful of that. Tommy John is still, uh, it's still a surgical procedure. And it is still something you have to rehab and recover from. And it has to go well. Uh, and if it doesn't, you're not the same player you were. And unfortunately, the Red Sox had quite a few guys that got hit with that after the pandemic. In just a minute, I want to talk to you about the other um, team called the Red Sox in this system. Uh, in this case, it is the Worcester. Uh, I've been told it's called, it's my buddy Paul, big Red Sox fan. Um, I've been told it's Worcester. So the Worcester Red Sox. But first, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Talent Solutions. As the sun comes out and small businesses are back in business, LinkedIn Jobs makes it easier to grow your team. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the people you want to interview faster and for free. 
Create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the largest professional network of over 810 million people. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. And that's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. Okay, tons of talent in Worcester. So uh, a guy who I kind of expected to see already, and we haven't seen him yet, number two prospect in the system, first baseman Tristan Cassis. Last year's number one until Marcelo Meyer got drafted. But 6'5", 245, 2018 first rounder out of high school and uh, had a great year in 2021. So played, uh, was in double A, was in triple A, played for Team USA at the Olympics, um, led them with three home runs, eight RBIs. Mike Shosha was the manager. Just Mike Shosha would not shut up about Tristan Cassis and how great he was. So big, big guy, 6'5", 245, has the power that you expect to see out of this massive guy in the box, right? Um, Is really good with the approach of, okay, it's early in the count. I can sell out a little bit. I can swing for the fences. And then two strikes come up. All right, I'm going to choke up. I'm going to, you know, widen the stance a bit. And I'm going to use the whole field and look to just poke the ball and put the ball in play. Um, Used to be a third baseman. They've moved him to first. Uh, Good arm, good hands, good footwork. Obviously, he's a big fella to throw to over there. Uh, I feel like he he could be an all-star at first base. And he's the kind of guy... The thought process for me is in a perfect world, J.D. Martinez's contract runs out after this season. He's obviously your DH. You've got uh, first base and third base talent. Uh, there in Boston. So the best case scenario is end of the season, J.D. Martinez leaves. You can take your 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 corner infielders. You can put them, you can put one of them at DH and Tristan, Tristan Cassis can play first base every day. You've got a Bobby Dahlbeck. You've got some other guys you can kind of move around, but Tristan Cassis is your everyday first baseman next year. Uh, if somebody gets hurt, people are ineffective. He might get called up this year. I think he's good enough right now uh, to come up and play at the major league level. And, and it's something where speed's not great. Doesn't need to. He's first baseman. Uh, you're looking for him to to hit tanks, move guys over, bring him in. I think Tristan Cassis can do that. And I think when he gets a full season at first, you're going to be impressed with his defense. You're going to be impressed with um, how far he can hit the gosh darn ball. Uh, right there in Worcester with him, right-hand pitcher Brian Bello. He's the number four prospect in the system. 2016 IFA out of the Dominican. And signed for $28,000. Uh, and because he was a he was a kind of skinny kid, which just, uh, just kind of whipped the ball in. And then uh, physically matured. Had a, exploded during 2020 and, and came back. Uh, stuff was nuts. Velocity was huge. And so, got picked for the Futures game last year. But um, right now, 74 innings, 8-4, 243 ERA. And his, his, his velo jump was low 90s to like mid 90s every day, just sitting there. And then he can touch like 98. Um, the thing about his fastball when you watch is he's got longer arms. And so... The deception is not quite there. Hitters get a pretty good look at the fastball as it's coming in. It doesn't have a ton of um, vertical or horizontal movement, so it's it's kind of like it's kind of like Hunter Green's fastball. It's a little bit of a straighter pitch, and so he really has to one put it in the right spot. So the command has to be there, and then he has to play off of it really well. Uh, if he's locating the fastball, especially up in the zone, the changeup is a plus pitch off of that. Uh, same kind of, exact same arm speed, exact same slot, exact same motion, but it just falls. Uh, the slider's getting better. It's going to be, like, it's probably above average. And then he's been working on a two-seamer. I haven't seen a lot of stuff about how the two-seamer looks, but he's working on that to add that in there. Uh, I think once he gets the fastball command where it needs to be and he gets comfortable with that two-seamer, 
you're looking at a number three pitcher or so. It could be as soon as this year, uh, you know, maybe later in the season. Uh, but absolutely has the tools. Um, if if he takes a leap with the fastball command, could possibly move from a number three to a number two or so. But a lot of great tools like watching that there. Um, a guy, another guy who had Tommy John and, and things change, but lefty Brandon Walter, number six prospect in the system, um, had Tommy John in college. Uh, they they dra- ended up drafting him um, on like day three, like late in the draft, uh, was rehabbing, came back from the shutdown as a completely different dude. And so, yeah, he's a little bit old. I mean, he was born in 96, but he's got a sinker that hits 95. He's got a slider that is just, just sweeps across the zone. He's got a changeup that works against both lefties and righties. The raw stuff is really, really good. It's just a matter of, of um, one, can he throw enough strikes? And then two, can he, is this real? Is all this stuff going to stick? So far, it has. He kind of, he, he dominated double A. They moved him up to triple to A. The, uh, the, the fastball, the slider, the changeup is now, I think, plus. Uh, the strike throwing has been pretty well. You have to remember, this is his second professional season. Like, he missed so much time because of, Tommy John in college, came back to pitch a little bit, lost his 2020, came back in 21, and then now. Second professional season, only the like the third or fourth full season he's had since high school. And so, feel really good about where Brandon Walter is. I think he's a guy that he could he could debut sometime this summer. There's a lot of different places you can use him. You can use him out of the bullpen. You can use him as a starter. Uh, but very excited to kind of see what he does. I mean, he didn't walk a dude for the first month of the season. Just has had a great year this year. Uh, sitting on a 3.59 ERA right now. Seven walks in 58 innings compared to 75 strikeouts. Are you kidding me? It's like a 10 to 1 ratio. It's fantastic. It's better than 10 to 1 walks to strikeouts. So feel really good about Brandon Walter. And it's just one of those like we're just waiting on the day. We're just waiting on the day you call him up. Um, guys that have ca- been called up, um, you know, have been up, have been down, things like that. Jaron Duran and Jeter down. So Jaron Duran didn't have a great year last year. Uh, spent some time in the bigs. I think he hit like 215 over 30 games. Um, just kind of looked a little overmatched. 40 strikeouts to four walks. Spent the rest of the year at AAA. This year was doing really well at AAA, batting 305. Uh, they called him up. He spent t- he's, he spent 10 games so far in Boston. 297, 366, 486. Still didn't have a home run, uh, but 10 strikeouts to three walks across 10 games, so one a game, not terrible. Um, two RBIs, a couple doubles, uh, two triples, actually, because he's got really good speed, been playing center field for them. Um, just absolutely... I wish the arm was better, honestly. I think he'd be higher on this list if his arm was a little better. Um he struggled with hitting the high fastball last year. Struck at like 35% of the time, and that's why they sent him down. And so uh, he's he's messed with his swing to try to increase the power. And, you know, he should just be like a slap hitter when he was at Long Beach State with the dirtbags. Uh, but I think, he's, I think he's kind of finding now the right blend between hitting for average and hitting for power. Uh, if his defense picks up just a little bit, and the speed helps, the speed absolutely helps. If he takes a bad route, he can just outrun the ball to the spot. I mean, speed helps, but a little bit more consistency with the contact, a little bit better um, routes. You can't fix his arm at this point. His arm is his arm, but you fix those things, and I think you're going to look go from a from an average center fielder to above average center fielder. Uh, probably still going to bat lower in the order. Uh, again, has the speed, strikes out a little too much, but when he gets on, he's a threat. I can see them doing something with him like how Michael Harris is batting ninth for Atlanta and playing center field and using his speed almost like a second leadoff hitter. Um, talking about some of these guys, Jeter Downs, another guy. It's kind of gone back and forth. Uh, didn't have a great 2021, kind of struggled. Didn't have great stats in the minors this year. 
Um, you know, batting 180, 297, 397, uh, 11 home runs and 53 games. So decent power numbers there, but 69 strikeouts to 25 walks. A guy that is, uh, I'd pro- I mean, second baseman. Um, and and a second baseman that the the defense is fine. I mean, it's probably... He's average. He could he could slide over to shortstop if you needed him to, um, but average arm. His hands are fine. Uh, nothing exceptionally amazing. Uh, speed is average, but he's really good on the base path. So that's something to watch for. I mean, th- this year, 189 at bats, stole 11 bases. So as many home runs as stolen bases, and and I think if he could, if he had better swing decisions. Um, if he knew when to lay off and when to go for it, things like that, I think he could be a 2020 guy. He has the power. He has the stolen base ability. It's just he completely loses. I'm not going to say completely loses. Um, he, he came unraveled last year. He had a 50-game stretch where he batted, batted 117 in AAA last year. Um, Jeter Downs, just a guy that needs more consistency at the plate. Let's put it that way. Needs more consistency at the plate. I think he could be an everyday Middle infielder, a second baseman, fill in at short, arms decent enough where he could fill in at third if he had to. I could see him as a utility guy. You bring him into pitch run, you let him stay in and play some defense for you, but just has to be more efficient at the plate. Has to come in. You you can't use that speed if you're not on base. So something I want to see done, but uh, tons of talent in the system, tons of guys recovering from Tommy John in the system. A uh, lot, you know, lots of good hitters, lots of things to like in both uh, A-ball with the Salem Red Sox and AAA with the Worcester Red Sox. Uh, two great groups of talent there uh, with a bunch of guys who have the, the, the skills and have the talent to jump out of that middle group there. So uh, it's been a great week of shows. If you have questions for the show... I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. The show is on Twitter at Locked On Farm, or you can email us, lockedonmlbprospects at gmail.com. Looking forward to doing a mailbag again on Monday. I've got a lot of questions already. Uh, there's room for one or two more, so send those in. Uh, but until then, enjoy your weekend. And this has been Locked On MLB Prospects. Uh-huh.